Welcome back to Kane TV News. I'm Kate. And I'm Matthew. We hear the Pledge of Allegiance every day, along with announcements. But does every student need to stand and do the pledge? And what about the national anthem at assemblies and games? Principal Bell sat down with King TV's Julia to talk more about students' free speech rights when it comes to the Pledge of Allegiance and National Anthem. I wanted to start out by saying, how are you today? Oh, well, thank you for asking. I'm doing very well. It's Friday. It was High Five Friday this morning, which is always a great way to start mm -hmm. the day. Um, it's also Wear Orange Day, and I know that part of King News is doing a land acknowledgement, which I really appreciate, in honor of the fact that we're on the traditional hunting and fishing grounds of the Coast Salish people here at El Dubin in Kirkland. And today's Wear Orange Day in honor of indigenous peoples who um, were taken away into boarding schools or who had their children uh, removed and taken into boarding schools. And they, they really had their culture stripped from them and in, in some cases, um, you know, lost their lives in that process. And so it is a solemn day when we wear orange, um, but it's not a day of silence. It's a day when we, we speak up and, and just honor those people. So um, it's a great day for me to be here. This is a, um, a lanyard that I have that was made by a Tulalip student that I had when I was a principal at Marysville Pilchuck High School. So I wear that in honor of the Tulalip tribes too. Awesome. Anyway, yeah. long way of saying thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so onto the meat of the interview. We've heard uh, a lot about the Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem mm -hmm. being recited every day in the announcements and at assemblies. And so we were just wondering what are students' rights about standing mm -hmm. and reciting these messages? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And this is something I'm passionate about. I'm a former social studies teacher. And um, I hope that our student body knows that I'm really passionate about rights. Um, you can see the changes to dress code and in all sorts of ways. I just, um, I really want our students to feel like individuals and like they can bring who they are to our school and be represented in our school and so I'm excited about it. Uh, it has been kind of a highlight because we've been back for two in-person assemblies which has been a lot of fun and in both cases our, our amazing band has played the national anthem and so it's given me a chance to reflect on what that means for us as a school and there's two very different topics here the Pledge of Allegiance and the, and the national anthem and um, last year I started out the Pledge of Allegiance on the announcements uh, you know at the beginning of the year explaining students' rights, and I thought King News has been doing such a great job. What an opportunity to really come and have this conversation with you about uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. So here's what I want students to know. Um, when you enter the school, you don't check your rights when you enter the school, right? And that's kind of a legal term that you don't check your rights, but you still maintain your right to the First Amendment to freedom of speech. And there are limits to that, as I'm sure you've learned in your classes. Uh, you know, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, that sort of a thing. You can't threaten people, um, certainly, but you have the right to free speech. And we also, by law, have to offer the Pledge of Allegiance. And so there's kind of that balance there, right? And what I'd like students to know is that you have the right to stand up and say the pledge. And I want our students to feel comfortable. And if you happen to see me out and about during the Pledge of Allegiance, you'll notice I stop wherever I am and I face whichever flag is posted. And I generally put my hand over my heart and I say the Pledge of Allegiance and I do that to, to model for our student body. Um, so you have the right to do that. And we've heard before that students don't always feel comfortable standing and saying the pledge. Um, and then we've also heard that students don't feel comfortable sitting down. And so what I'd like our, our student body, our community, our parent community to know is that by not saying the pledge, you're also exercising your First Amendment rights and you have the right to not say the Pledge of Allegiance. You have the right to sit down. That's also a statement that you're making, right? And I think we've seen that um, more in sports recently um, and that's been very controversial and I'm not trying to take a side on that. I just would like to point out that um, by kneeling on the field, you're also exercising your free speech and an often, uh, in a, in many cases, um, that's due to very strong feelings about a particular situation. And so I want to honor students' right to say the pledge and to not say the pledge. Um, and then just to say that our expectations as a school is that if you're not saying the pledge, if you're choosing silence, that then you're silent during the pledge, right? So that's a choice that you're making. And I think that extends to our national anthem. And so um, it was really fun and I noted it in the assembly that one particular class of students, our sophomore class, they were very vocal during the national anthem. They were singing along. Um, I think when we're singing a song, it's okay to sing along as long as we're not mocking that song. Um, but what's absolutely not okay is to be talking or making noise outside of that during the national anthem because not only are we respecting um, our country and the flag and the people who have uh, given their lives for our country, but we're also respecting our amazing band um, and the work that they're doing, putting themselves out there and performing in front of us um, 
it's just, it's such an amazing opportunity that we have. And so I just like to remind our student body to, to respect the band and the fact that we're together in honoring our national anthem at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have students from many, many different cultures represented here at Lake Washington. And so I know there's lots of reasons to, to not stand um, or to not put your hand over your heart and that's perfectly fine. We just wanna be respectful at all times. Yeah, so going off of that, why is it so important at LDUB to protect student rights? Well, again, I think uh, protecting student rights comes back to that idea that we all bring different cultures and values to school and that we need to have a safe and supportive learning environment. And uh, you know, one of our areas of focus this year is on making sure that students feel safe and supported. Pretty soon we'll have the opportunity to take the panorama survey. And one of the questions we ask on that survey is, how, how do you feel about belonging in your school? You know, do you feel, you strongly agree, you kind of agree, you kind of don't agree, or you strongly disagree that you belong at school? I want to hear resoundingly that our students feel like they belong here. You know, they belong in clubs, they belong in the classroom, they have a voice in the process of learning. We have a great, fantastic community and a wonderful school and uh, fantastic staff. And I think the more we can honor students' rights and prepare them for life after high school um, and life in college in many cases where, you, where rights are really, you know, at, at the front and center, mm -hmm. the better we're doing as an educational institution. Awesome. So that's why it's important. Yeah, thanks so much for this really useful information. So lastly, is there anything you'd like to add? Yes, I think we have more conversations coming up, um, particularly about like access to restrooms that are gender neutral, um, you know, mental health days. I know there's a planned interview with Mr. Schultz. I just think uh, there's lots of opportunities to engage students in the conversation around our policies, procedures, rights at school. And I just really thank King News for this opportunity. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Julia and Principal Bell. The Indian American Student Association wants to invite to help them celebrate Navathri. It's an annual Hindu festival honoring the goddess Dugra. The festival lasts nine days with food, music, and dancing. The potluck here at El Dub takes place tomorrow after school in the commons. Come join the celebration. Have you seen the new skateboard rack in front of the school? It's a bike rack. It's over by the bike rack and free for anyone to use. You just need to bring your own lock. Don't use chains because they don't secure boards very well. As we reported last week, there are more than a dozen new clubs here at LDUB this year, like you modeled United Nations Club. We'll, members will learn and discuss about international issues, practice debate, and improve public speaking. All levels are welcome. Check them out on Mondays after school in room 268. Kane Com Computing Club works on solving challenging code problems as a group. Members can also learn how to create apps, websites, and more. The club meets on one Mondays after school in Mr. Stab's room. JSA isn't a new club, but is accepting new members. Join them if you're interested in politics and activism, and you're talking about funny and serious topics. You can also improve your public speaking skills, build resumes, and make a difference. There's also an opportunity to travel to the Pacific Northwest and National JSA conventions. Drop into a meeting Mondays at 3 p.m. in room 372. Do you want a quality commercial made by King TV's very own ad break team? Email Julia at jbron at lwsdbackdoor at dot org and we'll get in touch. The Kang fall sports season is well underway. Here's a quick look at Kang's sports team in action this week and over the weekend. Finally, this week we're excited to bring you the relaunch of Kang Q. This week the Kang Q team hit the school armed with a camera and this question. Describe yourself using just one word. Hi, I'm Addison and you're watching Kang Q. That was Kangtastic. Describe yourself in one word. Annoying. Describe yourself in one word. Confident. <laughs> How would you describe yourself in one word? Awesome. Amazing. I can describe yourself in one word. Sus. <laughs> describe yourself in one word. Awesome. Hot. Uh, yeah, hot. Hot? Okay. Describe yourself in one word. Energetic. Three, two, one. Describe yourself uh, in one word. Um, uh, 
Mom, you heard it here first. <laughs> How would you describe yourself in one word? Like, school appropriate? Nice. Describe yourself in one word. Uh, curious. Curious, okay. What is one word to describe yourself? You. Thank you. <laughs> describe yourself in one word. Smart. <laughs> What's one word to describe yourself? Um, happy. <laughs> oh, just, uh, what, is, what is one word to describe yourself? Um, pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Quickly, Cody, describe yourself in one word. Um, happy. Oh, um, that's a weird word. Happy. Describe yourself one word. Awesome. All right, all right. Sir, what about you? Describe yourself one word. Harry. That's it for this week's King TV. Thanks for watching. I'm Matthew. And I'm Kate. Have a great day and go, go Kings! Kings.